Minister Michael Slaskerhulik, um, I too would like to welcome Minister Cannon, Cannon back to the House this morning to discuss um, the reform of further education and training and the whole apprenticeship system. Um, the review group that has been mentioned this morning uh, was set up in May 2013, almost a year ago, with the remit to examine the future of apprenticeships and consult with the relevant stakeholders such as provi training providers, employers and unions. We are still tr struggling to transition from an apprenticeship system centred on the construction sector and related trades. There is ample opportunity for an apprenticeship culture to take hold in other employment sectors, but this will require us to build uh, on already close partnerships that exist between training, the departments, employers and apprentices. To collect data to make the system as effective and relevant as possible and branch the apprenticeship system out into the new sectors. Um, the findings of the review group uh, were published at the end of January and the group highlighted uh, the strengths identified in the current system, which include positive feedback from learners and employers. I think it's always very important to get that feedback because that's where we're going to learn most. The close partnership between education, training providers and employers with active participation from the trade unions. Significant contri contribution of craft persons to energy provision, infrastructural development, manufacturing, the high technology sector, transport and construction, and the high demand for Irish apprenticeships, apprentices internationally. I believe that we do have a strong foundation in which to build and, uh, these reforms on. The group also proposed actions that would very much change the landscape of the apprenticeship system in Ireland. One of the most important recommendations is the proposal to expand the apprenticeship system into new business and industrial sectors, with employers taking on the role of identifying occupations that would be suitable for an apprenticeship system. Another very key and common sense recommendation is the proposed constant review of the various apprenticeships and to adapt these placements and qualifications on a trade by trade basis over time. Ultimately, Flexibility and expansion in the system are crucial to providing quality placements for those seeking to pursue an apprenticeship. I strongly echo the call uh, by Minister Quinn earlier um, this year that apprenticeships should not predominantly appeal to men. And I think I know the first time I, I remember um, uh, calling an electrician out to my house many, many years ago, I think I was just married, and I was absolutely amazed. But delighted when it was a female electrician apprenticeship that was there with it. Um, so I think it is, it is very important that we don't classify the rules, as you mentioned, Senator Darcy uh, Nevin Maguire, as being, you know, the male chef that, that we're, thank God, we're branching out from kind of predominantly man, male and female occupations. Good to see the men in the kitchen too. Um, this weakness identified by the review group could be addressed by refocusing our apprenticeship system to encapsulate the new and different business and industrial sectors. I believe that we could see an increase in female, female interest and take up of apprenticeships if this were to happen. Part of the male dominated nature of apprenticeships was the strong focus on construction related work, I think as I mentioned before. We have one key component already in place since the start of the year with Solace coming on stream. Structural elements for reforming the apprenticeship system are in place with the creation of Solace and the establishment of the 16 regional ET boards. I look forward to continued engagement and debate on their performance in future and reassert my previous statement that I hope they will actively and positively engage with not only the relevant government structures but the apprentices themselves, also the employers and trade unions, and continue to build on the strong foundation that has already been identified. Minister Quinn has requested that the review group's, group's recommendations be discussed further with stakeholders with a view to progressing implementation. And I look forward uh, to the completion of this process and a further debate when the outcomes have been announced. Um, since the collapse, and long before I imagine, there has been a call to more closely align training and uh, education with the job market demand. Um, uh, and I think the Department of Education and you yourself have been highly instrumental in ensuring that this specific goal is in, was included in the Action Plan for Jobs 2014. While live register figures have dropped for 19 consecutive months, we still have an unacceptable unemployment rate and continue to strive to provide opportunities for the long-term unemployed. The Action Plan for Jobs 2014 places a priority on further education and training for the long-term unemployed. 
prior to the action plan uh, for 2014, I know that in my own county of Louth, the Department of Education and Skills had co has coordinated with employers in the Irish market and Dundalk Institute of Technology to establish courses which focus on in-demand skills. A concern which I continue to have in the area of further education and training is in the collection of data. Uh, I, I noted John, Dr John Sweeney's autumn 2013 review for the Department of Education and Skills in this area and he shares the same worry. Uh, Dr Sweeney cites a list of principles that should guide the strategy for further education and training over the short to medium term with robust evaluation of outcomes based on an ongoing collection and assessment of data key to creating and adapting successful programmes. We've been left with the previous government legacy of very little self-assessment. The main focus will always be primarily to assist the long-term unemployed, school leavers, early school leavers, persons with disabilities and others who wish to upskill but we must also focus on the assessment in this area if we want to continue to provide appropriate training, apprenticeships and education. We have, as I've said, been, uh, have many legacy issues to deal with in this area and um, that has been dealt with more than previously imagined. The government is working to achieve reform through the establishment of SOLAS, SOLAS and the 16 ETBs. Um, a complete review of the apprenticeship system with further consultation ongoing, as I said before, that this is crucial, I believe. Uh, the alignment of job market needs and education and training courses and op opportunities and continued engagement with the relevant stakeholders. Unfortunately, reform on a whole country basis may not come as quickly as we would like and uh, I must say I wholeheartedly agree with the sentiments uh, voiced by the Senator Darcy that if we are to do it, we need to do it once and do it right. Um, I, you know, but it must be recognised that major changes in the structure and the culture of further education and training and apprenticeship system are underway and I do welcome that. I look forward to the continued progress and development of further opportunities for the long term unemployed school leavers and early school leavers, people with disabilities and those who wish to upskill. Thank you Minister.